Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we're actually reviewing fantasy in the Netflix series The Witcher. Yes, love it, love it. I love the Do video you? game. I didn't read the books. I played Witcher 3, Wild yeah. Hunt, and I, I got addicted to this show. It took a little bit, right? There's definitely, it's different than the video game. Mm -hmm. And Geralt is different. The main character Geralt is different because, you know, it's being run by a different actor. Yeah. You know, the voice actor, like, you know, there's a combination of people that create the character when you're, when you're seeing the video mm -hmm. game. Um, but yeah, man, so it's good. Yeah, you he, like it? He, pull all, he pulls off Geralt very well. It's interesting. This is a uh, franchise that has a pretty long history. You know, obviously books, which spawned comic books. And the video game series were very popular, probably the most popular aspect of the franchise. But yeah. also, there's been a previous movie and even a TV series. So this is not coming out of nowhere. Previous movie and series? Yeah. Wow. Right. But uh, this is probably, I think, the most mainstream other than the video games. Yeah. You know, of the, of the adaptations. And, of course, so it is an adaptation. So one of the questions we can always ask, of course, is how good an adaptation is it versus how good just a story or a show okay. is it? Like if you watch this cold knowing nothing about The Witcher, how do you enjoy it? I could it? speak to that. Yeah. So who, but who, did anybody read the books? Based upon, so somewhat, it's based upon like reading the books and watching the video game. Okay. Then how, like okay. how good of an adaptation is it? What do you think? Well, going in pretty much blind, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. The, I, I was looking forward to the next episode. We were binge watching it essentially for over not too many nights. But going in the first episode, I think I was in a bad mood. But, <laughs> but I was lost. Too, so, yeah. Lots of names being thrown around. I kept thinking this is a Game of Thrones wannabe. I was like, I'm not going to see any other episodes. I was not happy with yeah. it. And, but then the fight scene at the end of season one. It was holy awesome. crap. It was epic. This was a fight was scene better than any fight scene in all of Game of Thrones. I, the, the, something about the choreography, mm -hmm. the brutality, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful fight scene. Henry Cavill totally pulled it oh, off. Yeah. That kind of sucked me into the second episode. <laughs> and then Yennefer, her whole thing, I was, oh, Lord, I was gone. I was gone. She is wonderful. Some complaints, though. They're jumping around time frames. I had no idea. No I don't idea. think you were supposed to know. Okay, but it was kind of annoying when I was like, what? what? Yeah, you what? Mean, you're, so yeah, I, I, so <laughs> this is where- Maybe, I guess you're right. We weren't supposed you to weren't know. Supposed, this is where, like, it, it was. A, I think it was actually a good adaptation. So first of all, the stories were not dropped in chronological order. Mm -hmm. And so the, right. the Netflix series had to that. essentially create its own chronological order mm -hmm to tell this story, right. and it tells it in a unique way. So this is where it's, it's an adaptation, so forget about whatever you think happened you know, in previous mm. you know, manifestations of this. And I think they did a great job of creating these three plot lines, right? You have the three main characters of you know, Geralt, of Rivia, Yennefer, mm. and Ciri. You don't know how they're gonna interact, but you know they are, right? Yeah. That's yeah. because you just know. Um, and then at some point, like they drop enough hints, like that painting is 30 years old, yeah. that everything that yeah. was happening before yeah. was 30 years ago. Well, keep this and in then mind. it kind of come, and then you realize Yennefer is ageless because she's right, a, because she's, she's a mage. mage. And also, he's a witcher and he doesn't age normally either. Yeah. Right, right. So I think that was part of it, was a meta way to, to tell a story that yeah. these are older people, you know, that they've been around for right. a long time. I think once the series got to that point where the pieces are falling into place yeah. and you know what the timeline is. It really took off. I thought it was great from that. It was a little slow leading up to it for the reasons yeah. that you stated, but then the second half of the season, when, once, once that everything was coming together, I thought this is really good storytelling. I liked it a lot. Yeah, and Henry Cavill, you gotta, you gotta give props to this guy. At first I was like, he's a one note guy. He's, I don't know how, he, I don't know are, how he maintains that voice, that guttural voice. Yeah. I mean, his, his voice must be shot at the end of every, of every yeah. day. But he owns that role. Did yeah. you know that he read the books the game, Play the enjoys game. the games, and he he, he sought, sought out this right. role. He oh, was good. going Before, for this role. Yeah, beforehand, yeah. Totally yeah. going for this role. He wanted he it bad. It. And he, he does Oh, he is grew up from now going on. Yeah. I think the video game, I'm sure that, I mean, I looked at some <laughs> screenshots. Of course, it looks like him. It's a, you know, a muscular guy with the white hair and, you know, strong face. But I think they're going to make it even look a little bit more light, right? I mean, he's grew up into the video game. Well, let me respond to, to some of the things right. that you said. Uh, I'll start towards the beginning as best I can remember. You said something about like the Game of Thrones, right? You mentioned Game of said, Thrones. Yeah, it seemed like, like a wannabe. And then well, it wasn't, that, wasn't that's lush. funny because a lot of people that gave negative ratings on, you know, Rotten Tomatoes and whatnot, yeah. 
you know, I think that a lot of people went in thinking like, oh yeah, this is like going to be the next cool fantasy mm -hmm. genre for Game of Thrones. And it really isn't that. And it doesn't it, try to be that. It doesn't either. try to be at all. They it's didn't try to beast. pick up the mantle or anything. They're telling this story. They did a very good job, I think, of capturing the... Now, again, I can't... None of us really can talk from the books because, you know, this, this has been a, a yeah. uh, IP that's been around for quite a while. Um, but I did play the games... And, you know, I know the storyline pretty well. When I went into it, I, I already knew what was going on. I'm, I'm used to hearing these names. I'm used to, I understand the relationships. So I, right away, I loved it. I loved mm -hmm. it. Okay. It, it was a little jarring in the very beginning because the uh, Geralt version in the video games and, the, and you know, Cavill's uh, version of it, they're different. You know, yeah. they look different. Of course it's different. It's okay, though. It's a good difference. It's it, an adaptation. It's an adaptation. Yeah, right. It's yeah. fine. You know, but you do learn the character. You know, when you're playing a video game, you're seeing, you know, a very well articulated human face that pretty much feels like you're watching a movie. You know, it's it's that yeah. good. I, I totally agree that if they were trying to capture a wider audience, they, they could have started the show with a little bit more, you know, what is a witcher? It takes right. a long time for you to kind of figure all the details out about what a witcher is. And I don't I don't want to do a data dump. But, but too much exposition. Yeah, it's not good. As Jaskier himself says, like, actually, one of my favorite characters is the Bard because he's kind of a meta character that's making fun of yeah. some of the aspects yeah. of the show itself, and I love that. And they kind of needed it; it yeah. kind of benefited from that. So this is a this is a problem with fantasy that takes itself seriously to begin with. It always looks silly in yeah. a way. Yeah. And when you have, I like worlds that have a culture. Mm -hmm. You know, like. But the problem with that is you have these characters throwing out names that are completely yeah. foreign to us, and we're trying to simultaneously get comfortable with a, an incredible background story, lots of characters, and incomprehensible names. At least Game of Thrones had Ned Stark, yeah. right? No difficulty with those <laughs> names. Yeah, you know? but don't forget John Stark. Did you, you know? read? You read the Game of Thrones oh, books? Oh, all of them. Yeah. yeah. Book one. Right, my wife told me she's the one that said read th this book. Yeah. Right, I sat down, I started reading it, and man, the beginning of the chapter one, in the beginning of the chapter, it's like reading the Bible, like this person and this family yeah. and this and that. And all she said to me was, "Don't worry about it. If you need to know who someone is, the author will make sure you, you know, yeah, just, yeah. you could forget everything." But that's that's my point. So they in this in this adaptation, they needed to maybe a little bit more make sure that we were following what was going yes, on yep. and like we knew who people were. Agreed. So they, need, they needed to do a little bit more hand-holding in a non-obvious, good good way early mm -hmm. on in the series. Eventually you sort of get, get into it, um, but it does require a lot on the part of the watcher, the viewer, if you're not already yeah, invested, famili in the invested familiar with the, with the story. So there's a, a point I wanted to make before though, and that is that Everybody seems to agree that this series was truly made for fans. Mm -hmm. it, and we you know like fan service seems to have a negative connotation. You know, I'm not so sure if, it, if it's meant to have a negative yeah. connotation. But this series is really a fan service, meaning that it was pretty much made for people who know the IP already. Mm -hmm. And the comment that I walked away with after, after like realizing this was, wow, there's so many people out in the world today consuming media, consuming mm -hmm. you know, data that you can make a TV show that is for the people that played this video game right. or the people that read And it's those. a big enough audience yeah. that it's going to be successful. It. Yeah. And, but that's the problem is a lot of people experience what we experience. Like, oh, that's a little confusing and you got to actually pay attention. God forbid you got to pay attention to a goddamn TV show. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, you got to... Yeah, but it's not just that. I mean, it's the experience of the viewer, right? right. It's you, you, want, you want to experience a good story. And, you know, if you're... Like confused as to what's going on, despite your best efforts, it kind of takes you out of it and detracts from it. I a almost bit. didn't watch it's, this. That's yeah, it's a so. it's a balance. I don't think they they didn't strike the balance well early on. Maybe because they were aiming at fans. Yeah, and so you know if they. If that's the case, then it, it kind of makes sense, but I, it wasn't optimal for the a viewer who wasn't already familiar with the IP. So, guys, you see the show. What do you what do you think of the character Geralt? I want to know like you didn't play the video game, you didn't. I, I played I played like ha bit. half of. So what do you Richard think? Three. What do you? Um, so I like him. I think he's a, 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 a he's a he's a little bit monotone, but that's that is the character. Um, he is uh, ambiguous, mm -hmm. and you know he's there's a, he's enough of a good guy that you can kind of be with him. Yep. But he's also not goody two shoes. You know he's. Right. he's 
you know, not again, one, one reviewer said he's not quite an anti-hero, not quite a true hero. He's kind of somewhere in between. Right. And I like trying to figure out what characters are Where throughout the series right. and trying to anticipate what's he going to do in this situation based upon what I think I know about him. And then it, that's, a, that's a ride I like taking. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was done well in this show. Yep. What'd yeah, think, I loved him. I, I, I loved him. At first, I was like, "Oh man, is this is he going to talk like that the whole show?" And and it's just very very monotone. But I, I grew to to love the guy. Uh, he's he, the guy's Diesel, man. Did you see how big he's oh, bigger yeah. than yeah. Superman ever was? And the guy's yeah. huge. Looks perfect for the role. I I love his wry humor. His little jokes you'll sneak in there. Sure. Um, they're great. And when he wouldn't, when he refused to kill a dragon, that's when I was like, "Yep, this guy's awesome." Yeah. I mean. Yeah. He's, he's not just a mercenary. He has right. a code. He has a code. Right, well, yeah. the refreshing nature of the character is he breaks conventions. He yeah. breaks the stereotypes of what we would think. Um, you know, he. I think he is moderately vague. I mean, let's face it. You know, witchers are are purposely mutated humans mm -hmm. as a baby. You know, they bring them in, they mutate them so they can fight evil monsters. monsters. Yeah. You know, in the back. The, the history of this world is that the monsters came in from like another plane or something. They don't belong there. So the witchers were their response. Yeah, it's like a planetary alignment or some yeah. was it concordance or something. And that and that's where the magic and the creatures came from. Yep. So that's I just saw that in some video. It's not that's not in the series though. And maybe they'll mention that specifically. I hope Unless so. I well, missed Bob, it. I, they they think that there might be seven seasons of this show. That's, that's, a lot. that's what the showrunner uh, pr is predicting. Well, I mean, they were getting. cleared for the second season, so they got the second. Yep. So that and they deserve it. They deserve it. So yeah. we'll see how it goes. So a few more details. So um you know, Geralt has this stoic nature about him. One cuz he's old. He's been around a long time, you know. He doesn't have a lot to say cuz mm. he probably doesn't give a shit. The other thing I love <laughs> is that this character demands payment. Mm -hmm. They and it was so strongly played in the video game. In the yeah. video game, you could even say you, there's a default. Okay, you you know, as you're playing the Geralt, and you say, "Yeah, I'll do it. I'll, I'll take care of this problem for you." And then the, the the issue of money comes up every time. And then you could you could raise and lower what you're going to charge. You could haggle. Yeah, you could haggle, and it's pretty cool because you know he is a paid character, yeah. right? and that's uncommon. You know, a lot of times you don't see like money exchanging hands like this, but it's part of it's part of who the witcher is. That's why in the uh, the bard has a song, you know, tip your three, wisher. Three, yeah, throw throw a coin to the yeah, witcher. Yeah. yeah, and that so I, one I, of his better songs actually. I, I I appreciate that because it it's another point of conflict. Mm -hmm. Like you got to pay me. I'm not doing that. Well, it's also it fits because the world is dark. This mm -hmm. is dark fantasy, which I love. Mm. And you know it, that comes across in many ways in the episode. That even the good guys get paid is, is kind of part of it. Yeah. Right? There's no no goody two shoes in this world. All right, let's talk about the magic of the Witcher. Um, magic, of course, is magic. It doesn't have to follow any rules, but I like it when it does. Right. Mm -hmm. Even though it is it is quote unquote magic, it should be true to its own internal set of rules. Uh, of course. You know. So Otherwise, consistency. yeah. If it's not internally consistent, doesn't make sense. You know, even in a basic way, it just feels lazy to me. Again, mm -hmm. not that right. it can't be can't work because yes, it's magic, but it just is lazy and it's not interesting. Yeah, you know, it's it's bad enough that it's magic. You know, at least make it make sense. So, as an internally. example, like so for people that might not, yeah, tabletop, you know, game like we do, like like if you're casting a spell and you're casting a fireball spell, it's cool to see two magicians or two ma magic users say the same incant to cast the same spell. Mm -hmm. It just makes you think there's a system in place or there's right. some, there's some right. logic to the magic system. When it's all just chaotic and completely random, you know, you lose your bearings in a sense. Yeah, and I agree. With I mean, you that saying. doesn't have to be the rule, but it has to be some rule. Right, there has right. to be right. something. So, and, in and this in, world, has it. In this world, has it. The big rule in this world is the balance, right? Which basically is their way of saying there's a conservation of energy, right? The energy's got to come from somewhere, and that manifests in a couple of ways. I think the most dramatic way in, in the first season was when Yennefer sucked the fire out of a whole town that was on fire, and then used that to power. An offensive right. fire spell cool. against the enemy. That was yeah. Cool. yeah, that but, was magnificent. That was, cool. that was a great scene. But I, I like that. There is a cost. People, you can die. You, you cannot just throw spell after spell after spell endlessly. There is a cost. You, you will be exhausted. Typically, you're exhausted. <laughs> if you keep doing it, it, it will kill you. People so, died when they were learning how to become mages. Remember mm -hmm. when she was in, in the, you know, the. the the wizard's tower, and like the lightning thing came down, and was zapping people off of that platform. It was or, like that was cool. Or just levitate a rock, and oh, my hand is withering. It's yeah, like, it's I like know, holy right? crap. So I, I like that because at first, at the end of the series, I'm like, you know, I wish the, the magic was a, a little bit more dramatic. Yeah. But they're really, you can't have, you, it can't be a panacea because mm. it wouldn't be fair. You it would like, oh, I got an army of ten thousand people. Okay, two spells, blam, blam, you're all dead. 
that that would not work. You yeah, gotta, it's just not good storytelling if it's overwhelming ex- like that. Exactly. However, I do like it better when the people in the world, this is like my huge problem with Harry Potter world, the magic in Harry yeah. Potter world. Oh, it's yeah, like, yeah. come on, I mean, you, you, want to, you want it to feel like mages, sorcerers, wizards, whatever, have been living in that world with those rules for a long time, yeah, you know, time. and it's well developed. What I didn't like about this world is that, you know, like the, um, during one of the combats, they were burning their way through mages to cast a single spell, often to no effect. Yes. Like, how how often can you do that? I want to train you for ten years. You're going to cast a single spell, and you're going to you know burn into ash. Yeah. It's just it, it was to ridiculous. Me, I was like, what? yeah, you spent re- years training somebody, and bam, you got one. And, and this was a spell. It was like what a fire that power. Bomb. Yeah. It wasn't that powerful. I could see if it was like, going to change the course of a yes, war. Yes, exactly. But just one fireball. You can tell and, that they. You could tell that the writers thought that that was cool. You know, yeah, it'll be like, it'll consume them, you know, and the people will look scared when they, you know. I and would say, you do it if you were the mage? I'm going to sacrifice myself to cast one spell yeah. for you? I mean, for what? For the cause? Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. after the first one was just was just smacked away yeah. by Yennefer. Yeah, that, t- now, that that pulled me out of that big battle yeah. more than anything. I was and you a little would think, pissed. Like, like with Yennefer, it's like, okay, there would be elaborate systems of finding energy to draw from, so you don't have to wither yourself to do it. Not right. just a flower, but I mean... That, so right. it made it feel like like these people haven't thought about it that much, and that like that takes you out of it again. Doesn't feel real. Doesn't yeah. feel like these people are living with that system of magic that they're supposed to be experts. Yeah, about. I agree. I think that, that it was a little too loose with like, yeah. like people are going to fight. Like they wouldn't just let themselves die. Especially yeah. now you think two mages are chaotic and independent. Yeah, in a sense, you know, you can't become a mage and be under somebody's thumb completely, you right? Because you're wielding this power. You're right. a powerful right. being all by yourself. Although I do really like the fact that they were, you know, she's training the acolytes and then the people who didn't do really well, they you just turn them into eels and put yeah. them in the pool. Yeah, right? So you're gonna power our spell. Now that makes sense and that's yeah. dark that, and that's, yeah. You know, that was, yeah, yeah, I love that. You don't make the, you don't make the grade, we're still gonna use you, <laughs> just not the way you think. So I really like the variability. <laughs> I like that different mages were doing different things. Yeah. You know, one of them is like, was good at like growing vines together yeah. and they had her doing that. And, and I like the mage warrior. It's like oh, yeah. combining even a little bit of magic with good fighting skills yeah. could be very and devastating. And that's, that's what the Witcher is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he could do what they call them signs. He could do, so he could wield a sword with one hand and then with the other hand, he could do these, these, these magics with his one hand. Now those, I, those potions. You saw him drinking potions. Yeah. What's the deal behind that? Just give him temporary it. power. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, but they didn't really explore that. Well, it's just like I, he's I drinking agree. something. Like, wait, what's that about? But if that, you play the game, though, you know that's what that fan is. service, dude. Yeah. Like, okay. I know exactly what signs he was doing. You know, I know the names of all that's of them. That's great. And it's cool because you, when I first saw him do his, the first sign in the show, he was pushing people away. Yeah. Oh man, that was and a I was great like, effect. oh my god, that's so cool because like you know, you've done that. I've the, done that. As the and for him to pull that out, because yeah. it does it does make you think. Uh, you know, I'm trying to imagine what it was going to be like for people that don't know it. Like all of a sudden, this like warrior guy is like busting out with like legit magic. You know, mm-hmm. now he is not a full mage. He's got right. No. He, He's got the wards or the signs, like you were saying, like he, that he can pull from in the video game lab. It's so cool. You can build those, like they can start weak. They all start really and weak. And you can amplify them with spells, Yeah, right? and you could do different things with them. So they, they you know, those mm-hmm. kind of spread out into like a tree of different things that yeah. can happen. Yeah, yeah, Which is really cool. I just like the, the, the growth that they, they built into them. But he's using the signs. That's awesome. Yennefer is just, you know, she's, she is, you know, not just an incredibly powerful character, but in the video game, she's really... Um, mysterious really mysterious you know very much you don't spend that much time with her mm. and you know you could tell that um you could you could tell that the witcher Geralt want you know he wants something from her probably to be loved you know like mm-hmm. this, he, he, he he for some reason is he can be himself with her and have yeah. something going on and that's part of the dynamic between the two and they play that very well in the video game there's segments in the video game where she's with him for quite a while and even still, like they just play it yeah. in the video game, just like in the show where he's kind of pursuing her like subtextually yeah. all mm-hmm. the time. Well, Geralt and, and Yennefer, for me, they were the, the heart and soul that the entire series. That those two sucked me in more than more than anything mm-hmm. else. I mean, Geralt is just just really cool. But she, when I saw her as 
as, as, a, as, a, as a humpback, I mean, just really distorted. I was trying to think, how did they do that? Because it really was very- they did a good job. Very believable. Although you knew that she was gorgeous, right? I, I, I knew, in my mind, I'm like, okay, uh, once I realized she's gonna st she was gonna hang around, I'm like, all right, she's, clearly she's gonna be beautiful and powerful at some point. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when it happened in the third episode, I was like, what, that's yeah. too fast. It, was it wasn't fast. earned, you gotta earn that. But then I realized that this was all just her, her backstory, you know, yeah. they were just catching us and up. And that was not, in that's, that is nowhere else. They made the for, yes. the, for the TV show, her backstory is unique to the TV show. Mm -hmm. um, which is another thing that kind of unveiled, you know, to show someone's backstory or their origin really is revealing of who they are. And I think it took away a little bit of the mystery of the character. Mm -hmm. Man, Bob, I agree. I loved her when she was crippled. Yeah. I thought she was such an interesting character, like her, her getting angry and like you yeah. see her like kind of dealing with her, her abnormalities and everything and, and how much it's affected her. But I just assumed it, she'd be that way for like an entire season. I, I thought it was going to be much longer But it makes sense too. now because the fans were like, yeah, check that out. Yeah. It made, yeah, yeah. That was pure fan service. Now, the other right main character protagonist in the series is Siri, the girl, the princess. Yeah. Yeah. And in this, I think I got the feeling that in season one, we're just getting yeah. her started. I think she's going to peak in the later seasons. Yeah. And, and yeah, we're just sort of seeing her origin. She's now. got yeah. something going on. Yeah, I mean, she's got whoa. something going on. Well, you know, this is a spoiler episode, so, you know, in the video game, you know, we ah. see her... La, 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 la. All right, go ahead. <laughs> no, but don't spoil it for us. Yeah. She's a two. All right. <laughs> that's, 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 that's fine. Yeah, but <laughs> she's awesome. She's <laughs> awesome. Um, uh, there were some people, some, some fans were complaining about that her storyline was kind of convoluted and a little weak. Yeah, it was a, it was a, I thought the whole Woods thing, you know, when they, the people dr making them drink the, uh, mm -hmm. the they forget yeah. the potion, that was a little weird. You know, it took a little left-hand turn, but she, you know, you see her power coming through, right? Yeah. Her raw, her raw some, power. Yeah, she's got some wicked raw power. Yeah. I thought that whole thing about, um, you know, what was it, like the way that he, became her, her... Yeah, her protector. Her protector was like through that rule of... Surprise. Uh, the rule of surprise. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was really... It was really good. Cool, it was yeah. very freaky almost. Like it's almost too powerful. Like it's just like this weird law that exists in this world. Yeah. That's, you could claim this which, thing. Which I like because it gives culture and background and reality totally. to the world. and mm. But also creates a good source of plot. You know, yeah. things happen because it fits into the world, not for some random reason. Yeah. yeah. So look, I think you should play the video game. So play Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. It's... Considered one of the best, if not the best, video game that's out there. I mean, this wow, game man. is wonderful. If you like, if you like this fantasy mm -hmm. style, if you like to fight, if you like, you know, having some spells and you know, having complex, a little not too crazy com complex, but there's fun mm -hmm. complexity to the character building. But the storyline and the voice acting and the and the, you know, the graphics are fantastic. Right. And the game has replayability because it changes. If you change oh, yeah. what paths what you, you go do, down, yeah, it's yeah without a doubt. The sh now remember though, the show, this is adult. There is nudity, there is gore. I love that this is a pure R-rated, this is not for kids. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I like that because it's like so much stuff is like, like a mishmash, like here, this is for everybody. No, I like stuff that's clearly an adult show. Yeah, With I agree. curses and all the, all the other good stuff. No penises. Not true. Yeah. You missed the penis. How did you miss the penis? There was a penis. Well, yours is easy You're to miss, right. Bob. Anyway, so <laughs> if you enjoy the show, if you like what you see, you can ask Steve to do a personal appearance at your house. I won't do it, but you can ask. <laughs> you can ask <laughs> but you could go to alphaquadrant6.com. That's alphaquadrant and number six.com. And please consider becoming a patron to help us keep the show going. And also email us at info at alphaquadrant6.com if you have any show ideas. We'd love to hear from you guys. See you next week. Toss a